digital storytelling. Uh, before we start, let me put you a reflection question. And the question is, is it different to be a teacher in the 21st century than it was to be in the 20th century? Let's think about the past to see better the future. And since Socrates and Aristotle, we can say that in that period teaching was talk and talk. And for more than 2000 years a short or known evolution happens. But in the beginning of the Renaissance a blackboard was a very deep and new technology. With the blackboard we have the opportunity, as the English say, the evolution from talk and talk to talk with chalk. And for about more than 400 years the evolution was too short again. But in the 20th century the evolution was talk and chalk. We start to use projectors and video projectors and slides but most of the slides were too much letters and no didactic communication in. But now what we have? We have talk from the clouds, the digital communication and this is the challenge of today. But if we want to go deeper about this evolution we can say that in 70 years we involve from a room computer thousands of times more smaller than what we have today. The new computers with enormous potential software fantastic and so on. But in parallel what happened? In parallel it was distance learning evolution as well. It starts in the 19th century but in the 20th century we have as well three important stages and these stages were open universities, the TV school and video cassettes and this was three important ingredients for the evolution of distance learning. But in fact the most important evolution was with Skinner during the Second World War because there are not teachers enough to teach young fellows to go to the war and when they return from the war to integrate them in civil activities. So the Skinner with a teaching machine was an important step forward in, in distance learning. But in the 90s enormous doubts start to appear. Web-based learning, distributed learning, computer-based learning, internet-based learning, in fact e-learning. Everybody was discussing about and around e-learning but suddenly we understand that e-learning was not only sending and delivering contents was not enough. We had another thing. It was b-learning. This B-learning was really a mix of presence and distance. But we understood very easily that in the future things would be different. Rosenberg in, 21, in 2001 he said in the future we will have a more radical revolution than e-learning. It will be just a disappearance of the E. And then we will have just learning. This is the challenge that Rosenberg saw from the 21st century. So he saw that we have two different challenges. Another, in 2004 with Stefan Downs and O'Reilly we start to talk about Web 2.0. This means interactivity but really a synchronous interactivity. And 2006 with, uh, with George Simmons we start to talk about connectivism. Connectivism means synchronous 
activities. But now, be learning as a different challenge. Be learning is a synchronous and synchronous and synchronous in virtual or in distance on let's say on, online and this is let's say the let's say in a very short way what it was the technological evolution of teaching and learning but not only this we have much more behind that and it was let's say the methodological evolution from behaviorism centered in the student to constructivism the theory of the multiple intelligence with the learning styles emotional intelligence and learning interactivity and learning from the neurophysiologic point of view and social learning and collaborative connectivism these are extremely important experts that we have integrated in the learning process and we are seeing now that the enormous evolution happens in the 20th century this means that as well a new challenge appeared in two decades we tried to implement knowledge and information society connecting cultures con um, countries and civilizations in real time but what happened in fact in fact, we have, in two decades, we have created an acknowledge and disinformation society only connecting. But too much information was too much confusion. More, learning and teaching centers for the school of the future are related with traditional and MOOC courses, presence and distance, grades and lifelong learning formal and informal and self-learning this is let's say what we can say that is the summaries for the future but more than that about our students what happens with our students we can say that our students today are digital learners they are reading less than two percent of all other activities they are spending more than 20,000 hours watching TVs, 10,000 hours in mobile phones, and more than 10,000 hours in video games. They are involved much more in digital activities, multimedia contents, and so on. Our students are really digital, multimodal learners. They have different learning styles, they are learning quantities of information in structured format but in a superficial in a surface format record in the working memory and transfer to permanent memory by interactivity reflection and collaborative work and they are asking her more and more multimedia contents these are different students now than what we had in the last century we are really living in exponential times and this is what we have to be prepared for and about today we can say that today we have let's say a four a student starting a four years technical degree this means that half of what they have learned in the first year of study will be outdated by the third year this is a reality we are currently preparing students for jobs that don't exist yet and using technologies that have not been invented what for in order to solve problems we don't even know that problems are yet this is a really very challenging century from the student and learning point of view. A course today is a four years of introduction for 40 years of life learning. But how should we teach in the 21st century? Necessary kill, uh, skills, besides to be an expert, in a specific scientific area 
a teacher need to be and to define a teaching model based on new methodologies and ICTs. Know how to prepare and present contents. Know how to make tutoring in presence and online. Formative continuous assessment are absolutely necessary. Know how to use a LMS and know how to use a virtual classroom if we are working at distance and some other recommended skills. Why is didactic communication so important? I, I, I would like to, to question you this. Didactic communication is presenting contents in digital multimedia format. Know how to make a proper narration. Narration is very, very important and know how to make as well non-verbal communication. These ingredients has been used for more than 200 years of 200,000 years of mankind. We always told stories. We always make them shaped in the cave walls. We make them around the bone fires we have as well used it in the facades of the temples and saying what are the main important message ramses when he built this abu simbel he said from here it is egypt and we are here this was told to me by the guardian of the temple but not only outside as well inside in the walls of the temples everything was written it was the draws in there but as well in the ceramics and in the middle age manuscripts in the the, the, the cathedrals inside the cathedrals and the messages from uh, from the, the bible or from the Quran, and even in uh, when the animal spoke the stories were told in their language of course but today everything has changed. We are facing a new renaissance. The quest for a global culture in a planetary space, a new form of writing, the digital format, and a new way of publishing, the web. This is a new renaissance. Uh, but what happened? We almost only communicate with mobile phones. This is what it is today. Everywhere we are using mobile phones. Even when you go to see the side, you cover your body with your arms and you don't burn all the way. In the in all meetings. But when you are home, you are just watching TV. People forgot how to tell stories, how to make their life more happy, handsome. When they make presentations, they make presentations like this. Lots of letters and no didactic communication. This is not a way of making a, a slideshow. It's in Portuguese, it's in English, it's in Spanish, it's all over. In all languages they make thousands of letters, thousands of static images, no communication. Even I have seen many people making presentations in PDF formats. I have no comments about this. But it is lost to know how to make storytelling. Storytelling in its digital format is a way of implementing our ideas, our contents, our services and our products successfully. This is storytelling, a new emerging methodology of communicate. The stories can be personal, the stories can be descriptive, like contents, or the stories can be creative. But what is really digital storytelling? I can say that digital storytelling, today we are facing a revolution. A revolution of multimedia, a revolution of thinking, a revolution of sharing. 
and this is digital storytelling. But in our revolution, we have a lot of common. They are the way we say, the way we tell our stories, we say our poetry, we express our romanticism, or we use our technology. This is digital storytelling. But more than that, complexity is based on digital storytelling, is recreating stories, recreating contents, presenting traditional culture or high-tech info in a common language, not in a very sophisticated one. This is the moment that in our communication and science we should be artists and scientists using tools and massive instruments to create and tell stories in presence or distance. This is digital storytelling. We are not questioning what is possible. We are challenging the impossible and this is using digital storytelling. Okay, Hans Christian Andersen, one of the best storytellers from the 19th century, said, fairy tales are good to make children sleep and to wake sleeping adults. Let's try to make this revolution as well. But the best storyteller man in the 21st century was Steve Jobs, one of the most successful storyteller of the 20th century. The question is, are you prepared to be the best digital storyteller in the 21st century? The answer is yours, not mine. Thank you very much for your attention.